Hi guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Chris Wright. I'm a landscape photographer working in Granada, Spain. Now this week we're going to have a look at the new version of Affinity Photo. That's version 2.6. Um, there's been a whole raft of changes, um, many of them uh, fairly routine, usability enhancements and so on. Um, but there's two really significant changes, and that is the introduction of uh, machine learning into object selection. Now, this manifests in particular in uh, the use of select subject and also in the object selection tool. And we're going to have a close look at those two tools and how they work in the context of landscape photography. Now, there's a couple of things that I need to say before we get into that. Um, one is that um, I saw somebody um, post, and I can't remember on what forum it was, unfortunately, but it, it, it was a rather wistful post saying, um, post, it was a rather wistful post um, saying, where's the effect of, um, you know, when I heard about uh, artificial intelligence, um, it was all very exciting because I thought that um, what would happen is that artificial intelligence would look after doing the housework and doing the washing up and so on, and I, I would be left free to pursue my creative pursuits. And it hasn't really turned out like that, has it? And um, taking that metaphor, if you like, to um, photo processing. What we've seen in um, Adobe Photoshop, for example, and Adobe Lightroom is the use of artificial intelligence to actually do a lot of that creative work for you. Um, and secondly, um, we've seen the basically um, the use of the photographer's work um, being uploaded to the cloud and used as source material for the AI tools to do their learning on. Now, wh whether you think this is good or bad is not material to this post, to this um, video, but what I would say is that um, in keeping with that original post and actually in keeping with my own beliefs about the use of artificial intelligence is that Serif Stroke Affinity have done a really good thing in restricting their use of machine learning to making the tools work better. And this, to my mind, is exactly as it should be because I'm the one that took the photograph and I would like to have determination over how that photograph ends up looking. And what we've seen and what we're seeing in Affinity's use of um, machine learning is that the, um, it's there to enhance the tools and make the workflow faster. It's not there to make decisions for us and we can, the decisions that it does make about the bounds of selection and so on, we can very easily alter. So this is all good and, and you know, full marks to Serif uh, Affinity for doing it this way. I'm all for it. Um, so, without further ado, let's get into the demonstration. First thing that we're going to choose as the uh, to demonstrate is the select subject tool. So, I'm going to go. I'm going to go out of the develop module into the photo module. And I'm going to go select and select subject. Okay, and it's used machine learning to do this. The machine learning is pre programmed, and it's made a pretty good job of selecting the rock in the middle of the picture. Um, it's also selected this. Um, protective piece here. Um, so I'd be inclined to, to ditch uh, that particular part of the selection. Um, but this has made a very good job. It's really got to the outline of the rock. It's not been confused by these sort of outlying um, plant 
stalks here, not been confused by this light piece of rock in the background, and it's not been confused by the shadows. And I, I think that's pretty impressive. So if we just have a look at that selection there, um, it's pretty good. Um, I, I, I'm impressed with that. Okay, so if we wanted to take this selection further, what we would do is I'd make a, an adjustment layer. Um, I'm going to go with Vibrance, just uh, there, and that's the thing. Now, if we wanted to remove these, um, first of all, let's just accentuate the vibrance, accentuate the saturation. You can see the change on this rock in the middle. So we've done that. Um, but what we might want to do is to um, unmask uh, these little bits here that have been picked up as well. Now we can see this much better with the um, quick mask turned on. And what we want to do is we want to um, deselect first of all. Mask's already turned on there in the sliders. And what we want to do is to just paint these two areas out because we don't want those to be uh, affected. And the way to do that is to switch our foreground color there, focus on the mask, load the paintbrush, and just paint that out. And there you can see the uh, revision has been disapplied from those two spaces. So just to demonstrate that again, turn the vibrance off, Turn it on, you can see the scope. Desaturate, saturate, and you can see it's no longer affecting those bits. So, perfect. Good job with the selection brush, no, with the um, subject selection. Now, and I've got to point out again that with landscape photography, it's not always so obvious what the um, subject of the picture is. So, the, you know, this is a, a testing test, if you like. All right, let's have a look at another picture. Here's the new selection tool. So this is an object selection tool. Wait for it to load the learning. And I'm going to demonstrate the obvious issue uh, with this tool and landscape photography. So it's done a good job of picking up the outline of the tree. first off. So I like that. Now if I, do, if I use the option, op, option um, it focuses it rather more. So without the option I can run over here and I start to pick up identical um, objects. But let's just focus on that one. There's my selection. Look at this with the mask on, and you can see immediately the problem. Although it's done a good job of getting the outline of the tree, it's also picked up everything that's going on in the background, and that's not so great. So what we can do is this. Um, we'll back out of this, so we'll undo the pixel selection, undo the object selection. Now you'll notice that um, this tool has got options. So we've got new, we've got additive mode. In other words, I can add another thing to it. I'll just quickly demonstrate that. So I could choose that. I could go back in, in additive, choose that. Now I've got multiple areas on the screen multiple areas on the screen selected. Okay, um, I'm just going to go out of that. Um, I've got negative 
here, I'll we'll just demonstrate that. So if I choose on that one, I've now got two areas selected. If I go to negative, I can go here. Okay, and that's removed the second one. Okay, um, back out of this again. And you can see that I've got intersect. Now what intersect does, sorry, just let me uh, undo those selections. What intersect does is it allows me to choose common areas between two selections. Now, to get around this problem with the tree, I had to do a little bit of lateral thinking. And the answer turns out to be this. If I do, um, if I go to my select tool and I go for select sampled color, I can go in here and I can sample the tree or the light area of the tree. Okay, just make sure I got that. That's a good one. Okay. And that's good, although it has picked up a lot of other stuff as well. So let's just apply this. We can move the tolerance a little so we can make this more or less, but let's just take it. We're only interested really in this tree. I'm not interested in the background. So what you can see here, if I apply this, you can see if I click here that it, it has not picked up the background so much as, as it has the leaves. Okay, so take that off. And what I'm going to do is go back to my select tool and in intersect mode, I'm going to select this tree. And I'm going to do it with the option. And there we go. And so there, it selected just the leaves of the tree. And let's make a quick mask here. Put an adjustment layer in. Um, we'll go with uh, vibrance again because it's easy to demonstrate. And deselect here. Take my vibrance off, turn my vibrance on, turn my saturation up, and you can see that it's picked up the leaves of the tree and it's left the background entirely alone. So this is very typical of the sort of lateral thinking that you have to do with uh, masks and, and there's nothing new about this. Um, this has been the case with all of the existing marks, masks. Um, and I'm not going to lie and say that this was impossible to do before. Um, this would have been possible to do before, but this new selection tool makes it a lot faster. So the, in order to do this before, what I would have done is um, selected my background on the color. Um, I would have then done an intersect using one of the other tools, probably the quick draw um, uh, tool um, to select roughly around that thing. But um, this new selection tool is quite powerful. And let's just go in and, and demonstrate some more selections. We have to be on the background layer in order to uh, to have the selection tool work. So if I go on option again, I can pick out uh, what I want to be selected. And let's get some of these down here. So we can go option, click, option, click, option, click, option, click, option, click. Okay, so now we've got multiple selections down here. We can make a new um, adjustment layer. Let's 
go again we'll go for vibrance okay and you can see that applying to these areas in the foreground and I can deselect because I've turned it into a mask so you can see this has been very effective uh, in the foreground I like the way this is um, working a lot okay so I think on balance good work from serif um, stroke affinity here um, I like the way that they're approaching machine learning um, and I think the machine learning, um, certainly the machine learning enabled tooling is, is very effective. Um, I think um, landscape photography does pose probably more problems than uh, perhaps other types of photography do. So product photography, you're always going to have a very obvious subject. Um, portraiture, you're going to be able to select um, say areas of um, skin colored tones and so on and so forth very easily um, so probably uh, not the you know not not the most advantageous demonstration from affinity's perspective but I've I do think they've done a really good job and uh, I think this makes it a lot um, easier to use affinity for certain jobs, um, particularly in the workflow that I use, which usually um, usually starts off with DxO, um, Pure Raw, or Photolab, um, and after which I'll typically go into affinity to do whatever layer-based processing I need to do. Um, also worth mentioning that affinity photo. Um, does support NIC collection as a plugin. So after all of this is done, I can take the almost finished photograph into something like Color Effects for um, for the final polish. So good stuff. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you found it useful, um, do give us a like or subscribe to the channel. Would be even better. Um, comments down below as ever. Um, I always respond to comments, so if you've got uh, any ideas as to um, other advantages of the new updates that perhaps I haven't um, covered, do let me know. Um, that would be useful for other people watching the video as well and um, helps spread the message to Affinity users. So see you next week with another video. Thanks very much, guys. <laughs> see you later. Bye.